a beautiful time to talk sport in the city of Lagos, Nigeria. Welcome to In The Game. It promises, of course, to be exciting. With lots of action in the world of football, the international window where the Super Eagles of Nigeria uh, will be up against uh, the Le Eagles of Mali later today in Morocco. What about, of course, in the world of tennis? The Miami Open still continues. And we're getting uh, to the exciting stage when it comes to the world of tennis. Not also forgetting uh, football on the local scene, the Nigerian Premier Football League. I am favor, Itua. All right, we'll begin with our top five stories, making headlines in the world of sport. Don't forget, of course, you can also be part of the conversation about, uh, you know, of our uh, social media platform, X, YouTube, and uh, Instagram. Now, to our top five stories, uh, the Chief Polo of Zambia joined the teams in Malawi, FIFA Window Invitational Tournament, in planting trees along the bypass road in Lilongwe as part of the environmental commitment and preserving a lasting legacy of the competition. Now, head coach and captains from the four squad led the exercise that had Lilongwe City Mayor Richard Banda, farm president, Fleetwood Aya, and the sports director Jameson Ndalama also in attendance. The tournament closes on Tuesday with Malawi facing Zambia by 2 p.m. local time, while Zimbabwe will take on Kenya by 5 p.m. in the final a day of the tournament. All the teams are using the Four Nations tournament to prepare for the June FIFA World Cup qualifiers. Interesting one, uh, uh, you know, uh, having to uh, go around the city of uh, you know, Zim uh, Zambia, trying to ensure that you know, they give more to the environmental uh, environment in sense of uh, you know, planting uh, trees that, of course, will help in the atmosphere in the next coming years. A good one, of course, away from football. That's to show you that uh, you know, uh, they are also thinking about their immediate environment. Away from there now to our next top story, where Brazil forward Gabriel Barbosa has received a two-year suspension on Monday after a doping fraud investigation. The country's anti-doping sports court of justice voted 5-4 to sanction Barbosa until April 2025. He attracted attention due to his unusual behavior during the surprise test on April 8, 2023, just before a Flamengo match in the Rio de Janeiro State Championships. Barbosa's lawyer argued that his blood test at the time considered more effective, proved his innocence, and claimed his behavior towards the officers did imply deceit. Flamengo denied any wrongdoing, expressing su surprise at the decision and pledging support for Barbosa appeal. All right, Barbosa, a player you know, in Brazil, suspended for two years, and one, of course, uh, would affect his career, especially... Uh, if uh, he does not have that rescinded, that would, of course, mean that in the next two years, he may not even be able to play or have a chance to represent Brazil at the FIFA World Cup because, of course, of his inactivity uh, when it comes to the world of football. Still talking football, to our next top story, we'll go straight to England when Nottingham Forest lodged an appeal on Monday against the four-point deduction imposed upon them for a breach of Premier League financial rules. Nottingham Forest can confirm that he has today lodged an forest, especially with where they are on the table. They're not really, uh, you know, doing so fantastically well when it comes to the Premier League. And having to, you know, get that point uh, deduction, it means that they would have to battle it out for the remaining games of the season, especially uh, looking at uh, African uh, brothers in that particular club. For Nigeria, we have uh, Ola Oloa, you know, in the team. Taiwa Woni is also in the team. I would also want to see them play next season in the Premier League instead of uh, going to the second division, which is, of course, the championship. All right, now to the world of uh, tennis. Andy Murray says he will be out for an extended period following the ankle injury he sustained at the Miami Open. The Briton, who is 36 years of age, received treatment following the incident late in the third set of his dramatic 5-7, 7-5, 7-6, 7-5 defeat by Thomas Macha on Sunday. He confirmed he suffered a full rupture of his anterior talofibula ligament and near full thickness rupture, rupture of his uh, calcanofibula ligament. Murray will now see a specialist to determine the next steps, of course, in his career. Andy Murray is one man in the world of tennis that has not been lucky. He has always had to you know, deal with injuries upon injuries. And this time around, he will be you know, sidelined for a long time. That means, of course, uh, the next Grand Slam, he may be doubtful for that. And we don't know how soon he'll recover for other Grand Slams in the year 2024. And to wrap up sports updates, let's go straight uh, to the uh, last fifth story. Of course, that's uh, Los Angeles Dodgers superstar Shohei Otani said he had never bet on baseball or other sports. Now, declaring himself saddened and shocked 
at allegations his interpreter stole millions of dollars from him to pay off gambling debt. Now, in his first public comment on the scandal which erupted last week and led to the firing of his long-term friend and translator Ipi Mizura, Otani emphasized that he had been the victim of multi-million dollar theft. Now, Otani, the biggest baseball star who joined the Dodgers last December in record-breaking of $700 million U.S. dollars deal, said he had only learned of the revelations involving Mizuhara after last Wednesday's season opening win against the San Diego Padres in Seoul. And Otani did not take questions from reporters and did not immediately explain how Mizuhara had been able to assess his bank account to steal an amount reported to be 4.5 million US dollars. Now, one thing, of course, that is key to this particular case is the fact that uh, uh, talking about Otani is uh, one man who is popular when it comes to the sport and he is uh, oblivious to how monies were taken out and how monies were used to pay for betting. And he is saying that he is not associated to sports betting. But, uh, of course, when it comes to the case like this, he has been, you know, named to be part of this. As, lo as long as his account was used, uh, that means, of course, that uh, he would be made to explain how this had happened. Let's quickly hear from him on uh, more from this issue. え、彼はその時私にえ、僕の口座を勝手に僕の口座に勝手にアクセスして、ブックメーカーに送信、あ、送金していたということを僕に伝えました。ま、これがそこまでの流れなので、僕はもちろんスポーツとバックにはもちろん関
But I mean, he had a twist of it. You know, Pesela was playing a 3 4 3, but for, for two days, he had a 3 5 2, ensuring that he had two strikers, you know, two forwards, so to speak, you know, against Ghana. Because, I mean, he said, you know, Osuna was, you know, highly isolated. I mean, in the game, uh, at the Nations Cup, and it was a very big difficult for him. But I mean, with the amateur play behind him, you know, we were able to create more chances, we were able to dominate, and then, you know, had a very good game. You know, like you said, it was a very good game against Ghana. And they have also been preparing. That's his game against Ghana. They have a lot of interesting uh, you know, section. He really has really, you know, drew the boys, you know, trying to infuse his system, you know, trying to ensure that they play the role he wants to play. They also mentioned the fact that, you know, he had an approach and his, his, his philosophy, his style of play. And he, he has been doing that, you know, with the boys, you know, very So I hope to see a very good performance uh, from the boys tonight. All right. Uh, you just talked about uh, what to expect in terms of the tactics from uh, the coach, uh, Fede George. Let's talk about the players who will be missing out on today's game. Basi is out. Uh, Frank Oyeka will not be available for today's game. How much of a miss will they be? And are we expecting to see some changes? Or do you think that uh, we'll get to see some players come into that position? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Calvin is the first game uh, due to injury. Uh, when, when I arrived here in, in, in Morocco, you know, uh, Calvin was not training. And then, you know, Frank was all available. For Frank, he said he's injured. I'm not sure. I think it was personal, but... I mean, he left, he left immediately after the game against Ghana. You know, I saw him, you know, greeting the players and the coaches and saying bye. So, I mean, he left immediately for Calvin. Calvin really wanted to stay, but I mean, he was, he was injured. He could not train. So, I think the team, you know, for him, had to discuss with the team doctor to allow him to return to England for, you know, um, a very you know, better assessment. So, um, Kenneth Romero missed the last game. Um, he also missed a couple of training before the Ghana game, but he has resumed full training. So, everyone here, as you know, the training yesterday we saw them in training, two days ago we saw them in training, everyone was training, everyone is available. So I still feel like um we need him to still keep with the same system of three uh, five two we saw, or maybe he will switch to I mean four three three. I don't know, but I'm very sure that a lot of players who lose the first game will get some minutes. You know, to maybe also mention the fact that you know, he wants everyone to, to have some minutes, but I mean it will depend on the game and how you really want to set up. I mean if you decide to still go with three five two formation, it means that he has to sacrifice um, is, is win players, which is you know, Simon or Nick Moore. But I saw something, you know, um, in the training two nights ago where it was we had a discussion with Nick Moore, you know, after the training for about I don't know what we were discussing for about five minutes. We also had a discussion with Kenneth, you know, separately. So, you know, these are two players who, who, who were not in the starting lineup in the last game and we had separate discussion with them, you know, after training. So, this might suggest that, you know, Luke Moore and Kenneth are not in the lineup today, or maybe he's also experiencing the reason why they will not be in the lineup. So, all way to see, but I'm having this feeling that he must still keep with the three five two system, which means that you know he has to sacrifice either look more or style more. I mean allowing the two allowing um either Bright or Bruno to serve as a wing back. But I think it is it's going to get it right and because he, he mentioned that the fact that you understand how the Malians are very physical and he needs to set up his team to counter the strength of the Malian team. All right, uh, well said. And uh, you know, looking at uh, one man who also stole the show in the first game, Tanimo. Uh, he was brilliant in the first game against Ghana. He's an MPFL product, coupled with Timuan Bali's uh, brilliance at the AFCON that just finished in Cote d'Ivoire. Do you think that the league players now stand the chance to join the Super Eagles of Nigeria? I mean, I've been an advocate of the MPFL players um, since I started following Nigerian football or started reporting Nigerian football for three years ago. I've always believed that you know, there are qualities of the MPFL that can play in the Super Eagles. They can also have quality. I mean, to the team, they can call upon and, they, and I mean, uh, and, and they will also, you know, put on a good performance. And we have seen this over the years. I mean, from Keshi playing you know, to Barbona, from any from Zewa stepping in when we have, you know, good players with decent retiring, you can have having problem with, you know, a medical problem. So we've seen this over the time. And then recently, I mean, you know, I mean, we just left the NPFL for for less than eight weeks ago. We saw how Tamino was brought into playing a team and bass system playing from the right side. Something we've not really seen. Do watch him at Bender Insurance, more of a center back in Bender Insurance. I think I want to be against against Ghana in a high profile game. So I mean, and you also mentioned, you know, Wabali was really solid, you know, um, at the AFCON. So I've always believed that we have a lot of players in the NBF. And this has been, you know, uh, my own opinion. At every window of games in the national team, players who are currently in form, you know, genuinely in form, we should get a chance. One, two, three, four spot. Will not off anybody. It depends on how the federation views. If the more you want to expose your league pedigree and brand to the world, the more you can infuse this player. But like I said, I mean, it has to be players who are currently in form at that period of you know the FIFA window. You bring them to the camp and who knows? You get a minute to contribute to this team 
I mean, it's, 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 it's like I said, gives the league a very good image in the global league. So like, I don't know the mindset of the NFL. Mm-hmm. If I'm sitting in the, in the, in, 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 where the, the major decision in the federation, you know, these are policy we will introduce. The truth of the matter is, people might see it as a quota. No, it's not a quota. What we are saying is that they are quality players in the NFL. And we have seen it over the years. I think with what Valley we just left me two years ago. It was in Keeper United that, 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 that taught to Wabala to how to play with the ball, how to make saves. If, if he wasn't a good goalkeeper in the NFL, Keeper United would not sign him. We just mentioned Tamino as well. We just moved to Tanzania less than eight weeks ago. And Tamino was one of those players that we were clamoring for before the half court, including the right back at Ramos. And you know, I'm happy he got a chance uh, to prove himself that you know, there are quality players in the NFL. All right, uh, fantastic. And um, today, another test for Fidi, the George Beckons. Uh, yes, it's a friendly, but there have been lots of talk about uh, this particular game, especially with the Super Eagles job still vacant. Now, how much of pressure do you think Coach Fidi is at the moment, knowing fully well that this might just be tied around um, his uh, job? Yeah, absolutely. It is a fact. If you are, if you are being you know, appointed on interim capacity, it means that you are in the conversation um, for the vacant job. So, I mean, it's very important that you know, the team play well, gets resolved. You know, I think these two games are very, very important uh, to the community conversation uh, as Super Eagles coach. I, I think it's, it's really working out uh, to the honors as well. And you could say, like, I mean, the condition is even working is, is, is really ridiculous. I mean, he's left here alone to be the first winner, to be the much older, to be everything. You know, he just came here with only the goalkeeper trainer. And, I mean, despite the challenges, you know, to really put that aside, and he has really focused on the job. I mean, and it's, it's also good for the NPF. The manager from the NPF, from a number, you know, sitting there as a Super Eagles coach, getting a result against Ghana, hopefully also get a result against Mali. I mean, it's... It, it, it gives us a lot of bragging rights and also a lot of good image for the NPL. So it, it's really under pressure. Pressure is normal for everyone. It's really a, a job like Super Eagles. It's the biggest job in the country in terms of football time. So, I mean, the, the pressure will be there. But, but, but I think after the Ghana game, from when he was able to set up for what the boys play, and now the boys are willing to play under him. I mean, I mean like I said, it's, I've said it on, on several platforms. You need to see how this player respects you. Know, you need to see how they really want to play for him. You need to see the momentum, the bond, between Fidelity and these players. And it tells you a lot of um, um, how good can this guy be in terms of you know, personality. Because, I mean, for a manager who, who is just an assistant coach, like 22 more under the zero, and then your, your main job is you coaching in the NPF. And for you to be among these boys and command this kind of respect, you ensure that they play the role you want to play. I mean, so he said it after the game that the coach had a system and they stick to how he wants to play. It means that, you know, I mean, this, this guy is also one we can evaluate. But, the result against Mali is very important to him, like I said. It's, it's part of what people would discuss around him. Is he, is he, is he, can he be able to um, take this job on a full-time capacity? I, I think um, you need to understand that these two games are very, very important to the conversation you know, around him in the of Eagles coach. All right. And uh, should he win this game today? And uh, with a couple of the, a couple with the fact that he won the game against Ghana, do you think we should, uh, you know, hand over? Yes, it's not in the place of uh, you and I. But do you think the NFL should just uh, allow him, you know, take over in full capacity should he win the game against Mali today? Well, you, you know my opinion. I mean, I've said my opinion several times on several platforms we've been together about the vacant job. Uh, I mean, yeah, the first thing is the NFL, the reality on can, can they afford to pay a foreign coach? Uh, they struggle to pay $50,000 for Joseph Purcell, um general trial as well in previous times. I mean, the NFL are buoyant to pay the foreign coach. But... Uh, I mean, the technicality uh, and, the, and the situation is what the NFL needs to analyze. If you look at what Ghana did, and they ensure that they have a permanent job for this window, which is free for the friendly games. In June, we are going straight to the World Cup qualifiers, which means that any manager doesn't have any time to, he doesn't have time to experiment. You go straight into serious business. And I mean, allowing Finiti to come and take charge of these friendly games has given Finiti the hedge over any manager you want to give this job, either domestic coach or a foreign coach. It means that Finidi has been able to have seven, eight, nine days with this team and two solid games, which stand as a prepara- uh, preparation uh, for the World Cup qualifiers. So, I mean, you want to bring a manager here next month in June or in May, and then you want the manager to just go straight into, into the qualifiers. And the fact that we are in a very tough situation you know, two points behind the league leaders in our group. It's very difficult for any manager coming in to come and take over this job. So if I want to take a gamble, and my opinion has been clear about how Finidi should be the coach. I mean, he has been assistant to Pesero. He understands players. 
the bond that we are talking about or I have spoken about is the fact that this Tunidi has been with this team in the last 22 months. He knows these players. He understands their feeling. I mean, he understands each one, each each of these players, especially maybe Syria and the rest who are just coming into the team. But the bulk of these players are people uh, Tunidi has worked with in the last 22 months. So it gives him an edge. And also, um, a, a very good decision for the NFL. We have allowed the community to take over this job because I mean, doesn't Finley doesn't have a lot of excuses. Every other manager that will come in in June would, would give excuses about time. We will not take such excuses mm. from Finley if he, he gets this job because we have been with this team 22 months, and then you were also in charge of the two games in this window. So there won't be excuses about time. And then if you know he's getting the job in the next few days, we start preparing you know, half the pitch okay. for the game in June. So, I mean, I, I hope the NFL will have, um, I would, would make the best decision. They need wisdom at this period. I mean, they need to be very careful in terms of the decision they will make. But if you ask me, I will give the middle judge a permanent job after these two games for him to be in charge of the qualifiers, at least till the next year after. All right, you made valid points about uh, Coach Finidi George. And uh, before I let you go, let's take a look at the statistics for between Nigeria and Mali. And they've had to play 10 times already. And they're looking at how they fared for Nigeria. Uh, they got, of course, uh, six wins in that one since 1972 up until uh, 2016. A friendly match which they played, and Nigeria won one goal to nothing. It's been domination also for Nigeria in the last uh, few years. And not also forgetting that Mali, uh, we are part of the just concluded African Cup of Nations. So I want to also ask you yes, it's a friendly, it's not much of importance except for bragging rights and for point for FIFA rankings. Uh, what's your prediction, uh, you know, ahead of today's game, uh, Toby Adepoju? I think today's game will be more difficult than the Ghana game because uh, for the spike, which I think the Mayans are very physical. They have um, not decent performance at the AFCON. And then Ghana are just trying to put uh, you know, pieces together. Mali have, have got a you know, formidable squad. Um, so I, I think um, it's really going to be a more difficult game for the Super Eagles. Um, it's going to be another interesting game for them. Uh, but, I mean, the players are really ready for this. But I, I still feel also by Major Hedge then. Maybe it's still the same scoreline, 2 1. I think Mali puts a lot of threats in the final third as well. But it's going to be an interesting game. But I still think I'm in jail with Hedge then. Maybe the 2 1 scoreline. All right, uh, very uh, one. Uh, let's see how it goes. And if, of course, your predictions will come to pass, we must say thank you for your time. I mean, in the city of Marrakesh, Morocco. I mean, Morocco is your second country, uh, by the way, but we don't know if you've gotten the name yet as, uh, you know, the country is. But thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Sure. Yes, of course, that's thank you in Morocco or in Arabic. Uh, that's, of course, Shukran. Uh, by the way, we're still talking football, and not just the Super Eagles of Nigeria will be in action. We also have uh, the Black Stars of Ghana. They are also in Morocco. I don't forget the Black Stars of Ghana, their new coach, Coach Oto Ado, is yet to get a win as the manager of the team. The first game he played against the Super Eagles of Nigeria, he added two goals to one right there after the training session ahead of today's match. Let's hear from the coach. All right, and that was, of course, Coach Oto Ado, coach of the Black Stars of Ghana, talking about the first game and what to look forward to in the game against Uganda. He's been playing mind games, saying that his team are not favorites ahead of the game against Uganda. But on paper, Ghana, of course, any day, any time will be ahead of Uganda in the world of football. Let's now go straight to results and fixtures from the international uh, window. We have a series, uh, uh, series of games played already on the international scene. Central African Republic uh, defeated Papua Guinea for go to nothing. Botswana played the goalless draw against Burundi. Madagascar lost to Rwanda to go to nothing. Tanzania were better off Mongolia, three goals to nothing. Sri Lanka won against uh, Hutan, uh, two goals to nothing. Commodore played on the goal draw against Angola. Cape Verde won against Equatorial Guinea, one goal to nothing. And Guinea uh, were better off Bermuda, five goals to one in finish. And Sudan lost to Guinea Bissau. And later today, in the world of football on the international scene, we get to see Uganda against Ghana, Zambia against Malawi, Zimbabwe against Kenya, Ivory Coast will take on Uruguay. And that's, of course, the champions of Africa against uh, uh, the side from South America. Senegal will take on Benin Republic. Egypt will be up against Croatia. Mali against Nigeria. Algeria will take on South Africa in that particular one. Burkina Faso against Niger Republic. Morocco against Mauritania. And Togo will be up against uh, Libya. All right, of course, we now go on a very quick break. And when we come back, we'll talk football. But this time around, it has to be, uh, it has to be on, of course, the women's category.
Welcome back. You're still watching In the Game and Favor Etua. We just concluded uh, the uh, stories, of course, and uh, conversation around the Super Eagles of Nigeria. While the Super Eagles of Nigeria will be playing uh, today against Mali, the Super Falcons will be preparing uh, to take on the Bayana Bayana of South Africa in the two leg qualifiers ahead of the party 2024 Olympic Games. Now, Coach Randy Waldrum did, of course, on Monday release. Uh, the players that would uh, deputize and play this particular fixture, 22 players were listed, amongst others, the likes of Rashida Ajibade, not also forgetting, uh, you know, uh, Asisat Oshwala, and also uh, other players in the team, Chiamaka Nadozie, and uh, uh, amongst others, Deborah Abiodun from the midfield, Adimata Inde, an experienced player, you know, in that particular one, not forgetting Jennifer Echegini, and up front, uh, we have the likes of uh, um, uh, Omori Sola, Babajide, we have uh, Ifoma Onumunu, uh, Uche Nakano and making a return, Chiwe Duhezu in, in the attack. Of course, she plays for uh, Pachucha Club de Football in Mexico. And uh, Gift Monday also is in that uh, particular squad. So a lot to talk about today uh, as regards uh, the list released by coach Randy Waldrop. And to talk about and to discuss on this particular list is a women football expert all the way from Oshobo, Oshu State, Nigeria. Yinka Olawali joins us this afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Welcome to Indie Game. Well, good afternoon, Favor. It's a pleasure to be here. All right. Let's quickly look at the list released by Coach Randy Waldron. After the list was released, some of the session, some persons from section of the media said this may not really be our best in terms of defense or some in categories of, uh, you know, especially the defense area for the Super Falcons of Nigeria. Yes, the attack, we have the usual suspects, but some persons feel that we should have, you know, maybe a better, more improved or better squad than what we have playing against the defending champions of Africa. Well, uh, of course, um, we've heard a lot of people saying different things about um, uh, the list uh, that was brought out yesterday uh, by Coach Wardrum. Uh, but uh, you agree with me uh, that um, this list, we have some players uh, that haven't really played for the Super Falcons for so long appearing on this list uh, uh, this time around. And this brings a lot of um, questions. People are asking a lot of questions. Uh, on this issue, but I believe, I think the coach uh, knows what he's doing on this uh, list. Uh, but of course, we also need to be very, very careful. We need to be very, very careful about this, uh, knowing fully well that uh, uh, playing against the Bayana Bayana, that the Bayana Bayana, as far as I'm concerned, they are one of the best teams in Africa. Uh, so, um, also noting that he's not qualified uh, for, for the Olympics uh, football. Uh, for uh, since 2008 um, in um, China, so this this means a lot. But um, if you ask me again, I think uh, the coach uh, should have glued, stay glued uh, to uh, the players that he's very familiar with. Because um, Wardrum, for example, Wardrum has not worked with Shukro Aladipo before, uh, the FC Robo defender. He hasn't worked with Chidema Okeke. Chidema Okeke presently, presently plays in Japan. You know, these two players, he has never worked with them before. Uh, so, inviting them to this crucial encounter, uh, I think is ready to take the risk. All right. Uh, you just talked about, uh, you know, the risk involved, especially in player, for players invited that have not played, uh, you know, for the coach in a long time. Let's look at the game proper. Now, Bayana, Bayana of South Africa, a strong side, and they just know how to go, go past the Super Falcons of late. We saw the Aisha Bari Cup not too long, some years ago, what they did. Then fast forward to the uh, tournament, the African Women's Cup of Nations, and now again, a qualifiers, and we know that Nigeria's Super Falcons have not been to the Olympics for a while, so it's an all-important game. Do you think that with this squad, that Nigerian side can go past, you know, the Bayana Bayana of South Africa? Well, if you ask me, I think it's going to be a very, very difficult game. Very, very difficult. You know, um, in recent times, the South Africans, the Bayana Bayana has always got in an edge over us. So this even makes it even more difficult because uh, we've not qualified for many years since 2008. We're talking about um, how many years now? Um, I think um, almost um, 16. For, um, 16 years. 16 years since the last time we qualified for the for Olympics, uh, women's Olympics football. And so um, it's more, um, it's, it's going to be a difficult time, definitely. More difficult because we're playing at home on the 5th of April, we're the first uh, playing at home in the first leg, which is um, kind of disadvantage in football. Uh, we're playing on the 5th of April. Then four days after, we're going to uh, South Africa to play at the Loftus Westfield 
uh, stadium. So this means that we have to, you know, win very well at home. I played against South Africa. The South Africans are highly technical, highly, highly technical, the most technical uh, football, women football team in Africa. And they are the defending champions, of course, in Afcon. So in Afcon. So it's going to be a very, very difficult clash. But we can't take it away from that. If we can win at home very well, maybe 2-0, 3-0, they're going to South Africa, we know we just have to defend very well and probably score a goal. But um, uh, the first assignment comes at home. We need to play very well at home. And we need to score goals at home. And you know, playing against South Africa, we don't have a good record against South Africa in recent times. So the coach needs to okay. do something extraordinary for us to win well at home. All right, now let's look at uh, the fourth uh, man on the day, talking about the fans and the supportership. We know that in Abuja, it's not been uh, massive when it comes to uh, the crowd, which uh, we've seen in different centers. And playing the way from home, when you go away to South Africa, we know that they can actually pull up the numbers. Uh, do you think that you know, the NFL should start looking at that direction, ensuring that you know, you, you, the game will not be played in an empty stadium? They, they can actually get the support they need against South Africa, knowing fully well that this is a must win game. Of course, um, this is a must win game, uh, Favor. Definitely is a must win game uh, because I am saying it again, we've not qualified for so long. So it even makes it even more, uh, more like that. You know, we need to win. We need to win. We need to win very, very well. And I think the fans uh, coming in, they can fill up the stadium at the MQ Abiola Stadium in Africa. I think it's going to be an advantage for us. Uh, we just saw what happened in the whole African games. Nigeria versus Ghana in the final. I think it was the fans uh, that made Ghana win that game uh, some, some days ago. I think it was the fans. So if we can do the same thing here, if the fans you know, can give us that support, can give the Super Falcons 100% support, I am 100% sure that we can win. But again, we also need to look at how we can win. We have to take our chances. Our chances, we have to score as many goals as possible. Uh, thank God we have um, Chiwendu Ezo is coming into the squad. Uh, she has scored seven goals for Pashuka this season already in the uh, Mexican uh, Liga, Liga, Liga FX. So uh, she even scored this morning. She scored a goal uh, early this morning, uh, making it her eighth goal this season for a new club. So uh, we also have Oshola scoring goal in, in BFC and the rest. Uh, we have uh, Rashida Dajibani doing very well for our club also. So it's all for us, you know, the fans to come out, uh, give the teams, uh, the team. Uh, the proper support and I'm um, positive. I'm very, very sure the Super Falcons will win at home, but not just winning at home, favor. Okay. We have to win very well. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Yika Alawali, for your time and your in depth analysis. Uh, we can only hope and uh, see that the Super Falcons, you know, qualify to the Paris 2024 Olympics. It will really be interesting. Knowing fully well that, uh, you know, uh, we have it in, in Europe. And not forgetting also the fact that the last time uh, the Falcons went to France, they had a good also at the World Cup. It will be like a return for them at, uh, you know, the 2024 Olympics in France. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, thanks, Weber. It's always a pleasure. All right, that was Jika Olawale talking about uh, the squad released by Coach Randy Waldrum and what to expect from that uh, doubleheader, uh, you know, against the Bayana Bayana of South Africa. Let's go back home to the Nigeria Premier Football League. Shooting stars on beating record ended by Niger Tornadoes. Two goals to one in finish. And the Econ Ala boys were able uh, to do the, uh, their beat, uh, you know, in that particular one. All right, uh, the pitch there, of course. Uh, but uh, football has to be played. Right here, and uh, it was, of course, uh, shooting stars get, uh, losing that particular game. Let's quickly take a look at the table as it stands. The Nigerian Premier Football League uh, season is going up and up. Rangers sit off the table, Lobby stars second, Remo stars third. Ayiba, Plateau United, and Kano Pillars complete uh, that part of the table. Of course, the bottom, we know, of course, Heartland is still there, uh, you know, right there at the bottom of the table, and they're hoping to come out uh, pretty soon. But uh, we have Gumbi United, Bayasa United, Aqua United just in, on top. Uh, with a better goal difference, 31 points with, of course, Bayesa United and Rivers United who have a couple of outstanding matches. Away from there now to the Ghana Premier League. Let's take some results from games played on Monday. Uh, Heart of Lions played on a 2-2 draw against Bibiana Goodstar. And Real Tamale won against Aqua Lions, one goal to nothing. In Morocco, we had a game, the Morocco Cup, where USM Uja uh, won against FEF Rabat, three goals to one. Away from Morocco to Algeria, League One, where JS Aroa uh, lost to MC Algeria, one goal to nothing. And Paradu AC played out a goalless draw against Ben Aknoun in that particular order. 
away from uh, the league football. Let's go straight now to uh, Europe and talk about the games to expect uh, today in uh, the world of football. I will get to see Wales against Poland. That's a game to come up later today. Not also forgetting Group B, Ukraine will take on Iceland. That's the Euro 2024 playoffs. And in Group C, Georgia will be up against Greece. Away from there to the AFC qualification round two, Group A fixtures. India will take on Afghanistan. Kuwait will be up against Qatar. In Group C, we'll get to see China against Singapore in that particular order. And uh, Thailand will go up against uh, South Africa. All right, uh, that's it on the world of football. Away from there now to tennis, where uh, Iga Swatek, of course, world number one. She was knocked out of the Miami Open. No thanks to Russian Ekaterina Alexandrova, who won 6-4, 6-2. That was a fabulous uh, feel. Oh, that's an electrifying point from both of them. An upset you want to say when it comes to the world of tennis, uh, Igor Swatek has not been her best, especially this year, 2024. Not just about Igor Swatek, also Coco Golf did not also let her fans. And Garcia. All right, Coco Golf right there. Uh, she's been knocked out of the competition and uh, she'll look forward to the next event and the next major Grand Slam. Still talking the Miami Open in the men's category. It was, of course, a moment of scare, but Carlos Alcaraz. Powered into the fourth round of the Miami Open with a 6-2, 6-4 win over French veteran Gail Monfils. Moment of scare for the man Carlos Alcaraz. Gil Murphy, by the way, was at some point injured in that game, but he was able to still continue. And Carlos Alcaraz will be looking forward uh, to get this particular title uh, later this week. All right, now to the NBA, the world of basketball. We are looking at Doncic had 29 points, 13 assists, and 12 rebounds. Of course, that's an interesting one right there for the Mavericks. Let's quickly go straight to other results from the NBA played last night and the early hours of today. Cleveland Cavaliers were better off Charlotte Hornets, 105 to, 115 to 92 points. It was Atlanta Hawks getting the better of Boston Celtics, 120 to 118 points. New York Knicks were better off Detroit Pistons, 124 to 99 points. It was Toronto Raptors losing to Brooklyn Nets, 88 to 96 points. Washington Wizards uh, narrowly won against uh, a loss against the Chicago Bulls, 105 to 107 points. Houston Rockets defeated Portland Trail Blazers, 110 to 92 points. San Antonio Spurs. Uh, one against Phoenix Suns, 104 to 102 points. Denver Nuggets were better off uh, Memphis Grizzlies, 128 to 103 points. Dallas Mavericks were better off Utah Jazz, 125 to 115 points. Sacramento Kings were better off Philadelphia 76ers, 108 to 96 points. And Indiana Pacers uh, took uh, early Clippers to the cleaners, 133 to 116 points. Interesting times ahead for uh, lovers of the world of basketball. All right, it's been an amazing uh, 50 minutes plus, of course, time on the show today. Uh, and, uh, you know, we can actually do sports all and on and on, but uh, we just have to stop on today's edition. Thank you very much for watching. And favor, Itua, do have a lovely day.